Welcome to this video tutorial about surface generation with Match3DX. We want to introduce here the different production workflows that are possible with Match3DX and also to show which setup you need to get good results. For typical products normally we have the autophoto generation the true autophotos and the textured meshes. The autophoto production is a very classic standard production line where typically you have a digital terrain model, then we have aerial images that will be singly georeferenced. So if yeah, I have 100 aerial images, then I will get 100 autophotos then we, these autophotos have been generated with a correct terrain model and then we stitch them together. So in this case through seam lines, the autophotos will be merged together to a seamless mosaic, which is then a typical autophoto workflow. With Match3DX, we can also extract these type of data where we would need in this case here the feature based matching and which is a very fast algorithm and we also only need for this process typically an 80-30 overlap and it's um, then used with together with our auto box where you can use auto master for the auto rectification and auto vista for the seam line generation the radiometric correction and the mosaicing. The true auto photo generation is also provided with Match3DX and for the true auto photo generation we are offering the matching algorithm SGM 2.5D. You will need to get good results an 80-80% overlap and um, it is much more time consuming but the advantage of course is superior. So instead of having buildings that lean into our uh, images, because as I mentioned before, typically with the classic autophoto, you are using a digital terrain model. So our terrain would then be on the ground. And if my projection center is not perfectly uh, in, uh, just over the building, but a little bit to the left, right, upper or uh, downside, then the building is leaning into our autophoto and therefore we are losing content. So we are not able to see here into the streets. We are also not able to see here on the street and therefore we cannot extract information from the pathway or here from this vegetation behind the building. So these things will then get lost in a classic autophoto. With true autophoto, this is a full automatic process. You can achieve this result with Match3DX running the SGM 2.5D process. And finally, also, we offer in Match3DX also a textured mesh. The textured mesh is typically at the moment more for visualization. It offers for non-photogrammetric or even non-surveyors a very detailed and clear a view to a scene. It also includes in this case the real texture of objects which makes the interpretation very easy and also uh, it allows to do in this case also some inspection for regions and areas or for project plannings. All of these three products, the autophoto, the true autophoto and the textured mesh all are available in Match3DX for processing. For the 2.5D, it is uh, an 80% 80-80 overlap flight necessary to get viewing angles on each location so that we can extract a very good dense point cloud. So one of the other possibilities would also be a multi-head system. So instead just flying a Nadir camera, you use um, a camera head system that has multiple cameras which are not only looking straight down but also with some degree 
typically 40 percent, uh, 30 deg 40 degrees, um, but also other systems are um, existing um, on our scene. All the photos are taken in a synchronized moment, so each single photo from this multi-head system or each single camera from this multi-head system has exact GNSS information and IMU information and we can also have for each camera its own or we must have for each camera its own camera calibration. In our demo data that we will use today for our processing we use a data set from Aerovest so we want to give thanks to them and it is flown with an EG urban mapper which is a very large scale long footprint for the Nadia part which has 28,200 pixels times 11,500 for the Nadia and the data also includes uh, oblique data which we will not use today we will only use the Nadia images for our process and they have an 80-70% overlap so 80% in-flight direction and 70% uh, cross strip uh, overlap in this case. The data structure from the demo data is looking this way. We have our uh, images folder and in the images folder we have for each camera, for the Nadia camera, for the cameras looking to the north, to the uh, east, to the south and to the west, each are in separate subfolders. To process our data we will use a smaller area in the center mainly because of enough overlap so we can have then enough different model selections and therefore we can process a very a nice good looking true autophoto. Then we also have a project for just the Nadir data set which we will use today and also we will provide a data set a project for the oblique part which is still currently in work. In the next videos we will then go through Match3DX. You can start Match3DX from the Applications Master. You will find it in Capture Match3DX and then after you select Match3DX the Match3DX commander opens up. And then depending from the different workflows, we will then go through the different parameter sets. We will show what type we have to select to run the feature-based matching or the cost-based matching or the semi-global matching processes. Also about the strategy, how we can define parameters for each of these processing types. Then also how we can run on sub-blocks just to run on specific er images and also about the output we will then talk and then in the strategy itself we will then explain here the settings so each of the processing types like feature-based matching or uh, semi-global matching has its own parameters to be set and we will explain them in detail in the videos coming up to this one here. So thank you very much for watching this video tutorial and um, hopefully seeing you in the next following ones. Thank you, goodbye!